Hey everybody, James with Love My Pups, My Breeder Supply. Please subscribe to us, go to our website. We've got fantastic products that you should actually be using to raise and have successful litters. All right, plasma, plasma, what are we talking about? So this is something that I have not used yet, but I've had a lot of people ask me about it. So I thought, hey, it's time to go do some research and get set up so I am prepared to use this. Plasma is a portion of blood that you can give to puppies that are in trouble. Um, you've got weak, sick, failing puppies, puppies that were born prematurely. Supposedly, plasma can make a big difference in getting these puppies back where they can survive. So, um, in researching this, it, it's I spent quite a bit of time researching it, and, and I found kind of sketchy information. So, I'm going to tell you what I understand. Um, people, will, I'm sure, will chime in and, and correct me on various bits and pieces. So what the heck's going on? So the idea behind this is, is that if you've got a mother who's, whose milk is not very good, or you've got puppies that are having a problems nursing because they're weak, um, and you can't get colostrum from mum, one thing that you can do is you can give them plasma. And what the heck is plasma? Plasma is part of the blood and that could be collected from that mother, or you can go buy it in a frozen form, stick it in your fridge and be able to use it. So let's just talk about plasma real quick. So if you've got a test tube of blood, and by the way, if you're gonna do this yourself, here's a test tube of blood. If you then centrifuge that, what you'll end up with is about a 50-50 mix of blood and serum. Or plasma. This is the part, this is this is the part, this is the part we want a bit of this is this is this is basically blood cells. And this part here is plasma. And that's the portion that we want to use. That's the portion we're going to use. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop clicking pens, by the way, because I've been corrected on that. I'm trying to do a good job on that today. All right, so you can buy frozen plasma. Um, you can order it online. I tried to get some quotes from people. That was three days ago. I only found one place that responded to me. It was not inexpensive. It was... Uh, it was $50 for 12 cc's and they wanted to sell you, I think it was $60 for 12 cc's and they wanted to sell you four tubes. So that was a total total amount of uh, um, 240 bucks plus some shipping, probably another 50 bucks to ship it. So you look at spending 300 bucks to get enough to treat a litter. Um, now you could absolutely pull this yourself from your mother so then the question is, how much blood can you pull? How often can you do it? And could you use another girl that you've got? So let's talk about the, we're gonna talk about, uh, uh, let's talk about the treatment first, what you give and how often you give it. And then we'll talk about how you might collect it yourself. So again, it's a bit sketchy because I've found different uh, bits of information on the internet. But basically you're gonna give, uh, in the first 24 hours, you're gonna give probably at birth, then at 12 hours, and then at 24 hours. And you're gonna give about five cc's or five mils per pound of puppy weight. A typical puppy for a Frenchie is gonna weigh about eight ounces, half a pound. So that would mean that you'd give that dog something between two and three cc's. And so if you did that three times, you're gonna to need to have something around six to nine cc's of plasma available per puppy. And so if they, these people were gonna give me four tubes of 12 ounces, you could see that that'd be enough to do about six or seven puppies. So that makes sense. So you can give this orally. So these first three doses are given orally. So you just, in a pipette, small amount, put it in their mouth, make them eat it. Follow it up by a little bit of honey, because apparently it tastes kind of salty. So a little bit of honey, plus a little honey, what they recommend. 
little honey to make them lick it up, make them swallow it properly. After that, if you've got a puppy that's still having problems or had problems later on, you're going to have to do a sub-Q injection. So a sub-Q injection, what that means is you either give it intravenously, which you're not going to do, or you take the syringe of what you're going to do and you tent up the back of their skin like you're giving them a vaccination shot and you inject it directly under the skin so it then gets so it can't go into the stomach because it will not get digested digested properly after they're a day old has to be done as an injection under the skin so at that point the puppy's a bit bigger and you're going to need more because again it's going to be about uh, um um you know, at that point, the puppy might weigh a pound and it might need five cc's, so you'll need more of the material. All right, so how often do you give this? I don't know. Apparently, you give it three times in the first 24 hours. So if you've got puppies that are in trouble right from the beginning, you give it three times in the first 24 hours. And I'm going to guess that that probably does you the most good because what you're trying to do here is get antibodies into the dog. Um, how effective is this? I don't know. I've never done it. But I've got a lot of people who say that it's like magic, so... Maybe. Um, all right, so there's the treatment. So now, how do you get this? Like I said, you can buy it online. Um, prices look like they're all over the place. But the one only place that I could find that actually I could get it today was gonna to cost about $300 for four 12cc vials. It will come to you frozen. You can store it in the fridge for years. I mean, up to maybe five years. Once you've thawed it, you need to use it. You do not want to keep thawing and freezing and thawing and freezing. So, you, so if you're going to use it, what you haven't used could be put back in the fridge and then you could refreeze it or keep it in the fridge if you're going to use it within a few days. Apparently the warm up on this is very important. You have to get it to room temperature slowly. You don't put it in the microwave. And some of the places say you don't even put it in a cup of hot water. You just leave it out on the counter for a few hours. Or better yet, put it under your, put it under your clothing next to your skin and let it thaw out that way. Apparently it can denature and then consequently it's not as effective. So you have to handle it properly. Slow warm up. Um, all right, so pulling for how much blood can you get from a dog? 1% of its body weight is what you can pull from a blood dog safely and i think once you've done that the dog has got to have probably a week's worth of recovery time so if we looked at a frenchie that weighed 22 pounds that would be a 10 kilogram dog and so if we try to take one percent by the way 10 percent of its volume is blood take one percent of its overall weight that would be because that is 10 thousand cc's and so if you took one percent of its weight that would be 100 cc's you could get 100 cc's out of that dog um, and out of that half of that would be plasma you'd end up with 50 cc's of plasma that's what you'd end up with and that looks like that would be a sensible amount to be able to use on a litter so I think you could pull from a dog one time now how are you gonna do this? I think you need to have a vacutainer, one of these sterile systems that you, when you go to have your blood done, we have one of these sterile systems that does it. So I think that since it's gonna go in the dog's mouth, I don't think that, that, that being complete, I mean, always sterile practice makes sense. You know, wear gloves when you're pulling the blood, use a vacutainer. But since this is not gonna be stored and you're gonna use it immediately and it's gonna go into the dog's mouth and not an injection, then it's not as critical. If you're going to go inject this in the dog's back because the dog is now over a day old, then it's a lot more critical because you're putting things into basically a sterile environment, which is in its body, as opposed to in its mouth where it's going into its stomach, which is not a sterile environment. Um, can you pull six, 60 cc's? I don't know, 100 cc's? I don't know, that might be a little much. I've seen things that said 60 mil is about the limit of what you want to do. And if that's the case, then you're going to get 30 cc's of plasma. Uh, so I don't know which one of these it is. So there's a question mark there. I don't know which one it is. Um, but I think the answer to this is if you've got some dogs that are in trouble, you don't have a lot to lose here because if you don't do anything, you're in trouble. Um, so I'm game for doing this. And I, now, 
Let me talk about my experience with, uh, with weak puppies and uh, premature puppies. The first thing to do is get your timing right and avoid this whole situation in the first place. I don't have premature puppies. Now, I look, you know, I'm gonna say this. I don't plan on ever having any premature puppies again. I've done it in the past, it's a bad situation. And so if I'd have known about this back then, I'd have tried the plasma. Uh, I know that there are some things that you definitely need to have along with plasma for puppies that are in trouble. And that is an incubator, which of course we sell those. So our portable incubators and our traveling incubators are great. And you need a source of oxygen, O2. And I recommend that you get an oxygen concentrator, oxygen concentrator. And those two things, um, concent, concentrator, tor, probably, I'm not sure. Um, probably ER, but it doesn't matter. Um, the, 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 the thing here is you should, you should absolutely have those things on hand. I mean, if you're going to do much of this, I promise you there's going to be a time where you've got a weak puppy, even if it was not born prematurely, that's in trouble. And definitely these two things are the first line of defense. Maybe you should add the plasma on top of that as well. When you're getting an oxygen concert, you can get oxygen bottles, but you're gonna have a hard time finding those because you have to have a script for them. And you'll run out of bottles. Uh, this is a much better way to go. Don't go buy a $300 product on Amazon that is made in China because their oxygen concentrations are awful. They will not work. Um, if you're going to buy an oxygen concentrator that is new and is going to work, it's going to cost you a thousand bucks or more. If you go to Craigslist and buy one of these large, bulky, noisy machines for humans, I bought those between 150 and 300 bucks and they work great. They're built like Sherman tanks. They go on forever, but they are not the quietest or most portable, but they absolutely work. And you can find that on Craigslist on a Sunday afternoon if you're in trouble. So try, look, get your timing right. Don't pull puppies early. Be careful. Remember that vets get this wrong. They are the biggest reason that this happens is that they don't fully understand the sensitivity of specifically French Bulldogs and C-sections. And they want to get things done when their office is open. And that may not be the right answer. So get your timing right. There's, I've got all kinds of videos on that. But then that hopefully avoids you from this. But if you've got a weak puppy, incubator, oxygen, oxygen concentrator, and potentially plasma. So there it is. Um, again, I wish I knew a bit more about this. I wish I knew a bit more about the price of this stuff. I will find out more because I'm going to get prepared for it. So I've got it stored. Um, one last thing, if you're going to do this yourself and you're going to spin it, it goes into a red top tube. It doesn't want to be a heparin tube or a tube that's got coagulants in it. It's just a basically a straight tube with no additives. That's it. So hope you enjoyed this. Comment if you know more about this, if you've got some suggestions about things we should add to this. I'd like to know. Subscribe to us, we'd really like that. And we've got some great products here for you, including, by the way, two different versions of incubators that are both inexpensive, portable, and work really well. Thanks for watching, bye everybody.